What's up, YouTubers? Jose Quinones, the CNC dude here with a new gadget that I want to share with you today. But before I open this up, let me show you how beautiful the packing. Look at this nice handle. But of course, on this side, it didn't survive. It got dinged. Jikes! I am hoping the contents are okay, and I do believe they will be. We're going to find out soon. This box looks perfect. It's not as heavy. So I am positive this one should be okay. And I'm hoping this one is so. Let's take a look. Well, YouTubers, this is the Vivor Hydraulic Hull Puncher. And I've been wanting one of these for whew, more than 10 years, maybe 15. I can't even remember. Uh, they are freaking expensive. Uh, not this one, but you know, if you go and buy one of any one of the suppliers in the US, it's gonna be thousands of dollars. And then if you want to look for an used one, I don't know if in the north you can get them for pennies on the dollar, but in here getting one of these used is probably going to be a thousand bucks. Maybe if you got lucky you can find one for 800 bucks. And of course they're old, I have no idea how beaten they are, but this, the whole thing here is less than $300. So I got a few gift cards on my Christmas list and I was like man this is a tremendous opportunity to get me a hole puncher and hydraulic hole puncher uh, for less than 300 bucks I'll put an associate links from Amazon in case you want to get one and I do want to inform you that when, when you look at the link uh, and of course I was confused by this as well because you see the machine here the puncher and you are under the impression that this is all you need but this is only half of the equation you're gonna have to add an hydraulic foot pump or some kind of a pump. So I got this one, the Vivor hydraulic foot pump. This is air based, so I'm gonna have to use my compressor to punch, uh, to push air, which in turn will push um, oil into the puncher. And of course, when that happens, this little die here comes down into, or you say the punch comes down into the die and makes a hole on the metal really, really fast. The kit comes with four punch and die sets. The sizes are 3 eighths of an inch, half inch, 5 eighths of an inch and 3 quarters. So I don't know which one I'm going to use the most. I'll have to play with that. But you know, changing the die is very easy. There is a set screw somewhere in here. You remove the die, and then you put which, whichever you want. And then the punch, you change it on top. And that's how you get this assembled. Now, the, the hydraulic foot pump comes with the hose and with a series of quick connects, which I believe are compatible with this. Uh, but, you know, I, I guess I should say they are not compatible with the one that is in here. So I'm going to have to change this. And uh, I'll, I'll make all of the connections. Uh, this kit also brought, what was it? Yeah, the Teflon. You want to make sure you don't have leaks. Uh, so, so yeah, let me put this together and then we're going to make some holes. All right, connections have been made. I was able to figure out the source of confusion. Uh, let me show you real quick why I thought there was no way to connect this. The reason is when you look at the coupler that was on the machine and the one that goes on the hose, 
you see, it's basically backwards. The one on the machine, um, which you're going to have to replace because, of course, uh, this guy doesn't match with anything on this equipment. If you, if you happen to have a pump that matches to this guy, then you're set. But in this case, the pump came uh, with a different quick connect and it's backwards. So as you can see, this was in the machine, but now the counterpart that looks like it goes on the hose. So once I was able to figure this out, everything matches. So now this guy, uh, the one with the nut that attaches to the hose goes on the machine. And according to the instructions, you're supposed to hand tighten this. You cannot use any wrench. I'm not sure exactly why that is, but that's what the instructions say. And I have to say, at first I had to use pliers just to get the first uh, interface because there must have been some kind of uh, whatever, some, some piece of metal or something that wouldn't let me make the connection. But now I can do it by hand, so now I'm legal. Uh, Teflon has been used on all of the connections as you saw on the, uh, on the video. And now all I have to do is apply 100 PSI of air and I should be able to start punching. Well, once this guy works, you will want to start making a whole bunch of holes. So I have tried all the dies, and I am surprised with the results. I'm happy with the, how the machine works. You know, it is not as fast as I first said that I said that at first I said it was like really, really fast. It's not that fast, but it's not slow either. It will take some time for the plunger to come down. And once the plunger engaged with the metal, it is impressively, impressively robust how it just goes through. So. I am surprised, uh, I am happily surprised with the results. I tried uh, the four dies on different thicknesses. These are incredibly thin pieces of metal. It can do way much more than that. I believe the rule is do not try to uh, cut a hole on a piece of metal that is thicker than the diameter of the punch. So this is a quarter inch punch. Do not try to make a hole on a piece of metal that is thicker than a quarter inch. That's the rule. Um, overall, I'm super satisfied with the piece of equipment, so I have a few projects in mind that I want to tackle with them, but those will come in a different video. Now, before I go, I want to share some pieces of insight that uh, you, may, uh, you may find enlightening. The first one, so, you know, I got the pump, I started playing with it, everything was hooked, I had my 100 PSI, and as I was actuating it, the plunger was not coming down. I could hear the action, but the plunger was not coming down. So I figured, I wonder if I have enough oil because when I look through the reservoir hole in here, it looked like there was plenty of oil. Well, the instructions call for filling it to the top so that like four or five millimeters are, uh, are left. So basically the top of the oil to the top of, the, of this plate, four millimeters. That meant that I had to add some oil, make sure that you use uh, obviously hydraulic oil, do not use anything else. Um, this is something you can find on pretty much, I guess, any auto store. Here we have AutoZone, Pep Boys, and some others. Um, I'm not sure whether you can find them on your, or your hardware stores, like here in the US we have Home Depot, Lowe's, Ace. I'm not sure if you can find it there, but maybe. Anyway, this, this is not hard to get. You don't need to go into some kind of specialized website to find. So you should be able to get some, fill it up, make sure you have up, uh, close to four millimeters up to the top, and then this guy is gonna start working. So that was the first hiccup, but now it's good. The second hiccup that I uh, did encounter was that I was using my cheesy small compressor, uh, the one that I just used for changing tools on the Tormac. And for that it's perfectly fine because obviously you're pressing a piston and releasing the TTS tool, so no problem there. But to, for this guy, you're gonna need something beefier. 
Uh, the instructions call for 100 PSI at anywhere between 5 and 10 CFM. So my large compressor is not supposed to be able to do that. According to the specification, my large compressor can do like 4 point some, something CFM at 40 PSI or something like that. But um, it, I put it at 100, uh, 100 PSI and even if if it goes down to 80, it can still punch. I am not sure what's gonna happen if you wanna go uh, to make a hole on something really thick, and maybe that will be a struggle. But for any of these holes that I made in here, 100 PSI with less than five CFM was enough. If you have a larger compressor, then you're in good shape. But a wimpy compressor is definitely not gonna work. So the small compressor, as soon as I press the, <laughs> the the, as soon as I engaged, it started compressing again because immediately all of the reservoir was depleted. So it, it, it didn't work. Uh, so make sure that you have a good enough compressor. Otherwise, you may want to look for an electric pump. There are electric pumps. They're like somewhere in between three and four hundred dollars, but a good enough compressor is probably going to be three or four hundred dollars. So if you have absolutely no use for a compressor, you may want to go with the electric pump. And lastly, uh, you may want to keep uh, one of these magnets or any magnets to remove the punch that uh, I'm sorry, the die that actually uh, came in handy because I don't even know how you can, I, mean, I don't know if you can pull it or push it from below. I don't, I don't think it's gonna be easy. You're gonna have, you're gonna need like super long fingers. Um, uh, I, I call them alien fingers. So obviously a magnet is much easier. It goes out uh, really easily with a magnet. So make sure to give one a hand uh, because for replacing the die, uh, it's gonna be hard otherwise. The last thing I want to say before I wrap up is I am incredibly satisfied with this piece of equipment, less than $350. Um, to me, this is an incredible bargain. I tell you, there is no way you can find any punch for at that kind of price, not even used, okay? Not even used can I find something for three or 400 bucks in this region. So if you, if you need to make holes and you're here in the South, you're probably gonna uh, benefit from something like this. Um, on the con, I'm gonna say, obviously, this is not gonna work for angle, which is one of the things that I wanted to do. Unfortunately, the iron, um, the angle iron uh, just crashes with the, with the die. So I think this is only meant for flat pieces or anything with a large enough cavity. Um, but you know, it's still incredibly useful as it is. I have to imagine that this thing is not gonna last as much as something that was built uh, in the US back in the 50s or the 60s or even the 70s or 80s which, you know, these things were last, uh, were built to last centuries. Um, but, you know, I'm not gonna make hundreds of holes per day, so I have to imagine this is gonna be okay. I do, I do realize that hydraulic equipment is kind of dangerous. The pressures in here, I mean, we're talking about thousands of PSI, okay? So it's 100 PSI going uh, into the air and then the pump transforms it into a thousand, uh, I think it's 10,000 PSI. So um, definitely for, if, if anything here breaks and you have a stream of, of oil at 10,000 PSI, you would not want to be in the middle of it. So I have to say that is something that is of, of course scary to me, but this looks really well built. Uh, the quality is decent. I will admit that I'm not an expert, so I wouldn't be able to tell you with 100% certainty whether this is top-notch or not. Um, that is something to consider if you are squeamish about this kind of equipment uh, representing some, har some, some harmful condition to you or, or, or your loved one. So definitely then you'll have to pay top dollar to, to get the one that is supposedly safer. But my impression is stuff like this it's still safe enough. I have never heard of people, you know, like, oh my God, I got my arm chopped off because this seemed blue and it was like a lightsaber that just chopped off my extremity. Um, I'm hoping I'm not gonna be the first. But you know, overall, I think this is 
It looks incredibly well built. It doesn't look chintzy. The materials are incredibly strong, uh, very well, you know, this, is, this doesn't look like it was built with Legos, let's put it that way. So, uh, and I love Legos, but definitely you would not want this to be built with Legos. This is something that you would want to be built strong enough to survive. And I think it is. So I'm, I'm very surprised with the quality. I think it's a really good product. Um, yeah, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. I hope you have liked the content and you have learned a little bit of how to hook everything together. If you happen to get one, I didn't find a lot of videos on how to do that. So I think this could be a good tutorial if you need to make these connections and use your own punch. If you have stayed with me this long, I want to thank you for tuning into my YouTube channel and I'm going to see you on the next one.